look, I already tried troubleshooting. I unplugged all of its circuits. I even rebooted the Wi-Fi, but nothing's working. It's still broken. Broken? Let me help you with that. Here's some ice. No, I don't. I don't want ice. That's no, no, thank you. I don't want ice. You hear this? That's what I'm trying to tell you. This Medic John 1000 holographic program you just sent us has a malfunction. I mean, the only medical experience this thing has is at a school grade level. Malfunction in your cerebral cortex, you say? Here's some ice. Look, the big deal, big deal, the big deal is that our supposed medic over here only helps us out by giving us bags of ice. You seem a little anxious. Let's take your temperature and call your parents. And then put some ice on it. Are your parents home now, young man? <sighs> look, look, just send us a working medic John 1000 for us, all right? This is, this is annoying. All right, thank you. God, kill me now. It is not in my nature to destroy, only heal. Here, take some ice. Look, I'm gonna give you a piece of ice, you stupid. Jay, have you seen my diet pills anywhere? Look, how many times do I have to tell you, Tic Tacs do not count as diet pills. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose Skittles aren't fruit either. You look a little flushed, sir. A man of your girth may be experiencing high blood pressure. Let me give you some ice for that, young fat man. What the hell is this? Well, th this is a Medic John 1000 holographic program. It doesn't really work, it's kind of broken. We have access to holographic technology and you're using it for doctors instead of porn stars? Yeah. You are sick. Sick? Let me get you some ice for that. Shut, Shut up. up. Hey, why are there bags of ice all over my bed? Are we warding off fire vampires again? Uh, it's this Medic John Holographic Program 1000 thing. It's useless. So we have access to holographic technology and you're ordering doctors in the state Yeah, porn stars. I already got that. I already asked. I was going to say racing jockeys. Of course you were. Yeah, well, can anybody help me shut this thing down? How? Can I suggest some ice for that? If you can find room on my bed, sure. That was a smart lad. Oh, well, thank you. Good, Scott made a friend. No, look, can you just help me shut this thing off? I tried everything. I tried turning it off, rebooting it. I tried... You seem to have high amounts of stress right now. High amounts of stress can lead to high blood pressure, brain injury. Oh, thanks. Wasn't so hard. Yeah, but it would have been cooler though if you did it gangster style. Mm. Naturally. Hey, whoa, hey. Where did you get this thing anyway? From your mom. This is no time for insults. No, really. I got this from your mom. It was a Christmas gift from her last year for helping her shovel snow off the driveway. You're kidding. I am not. So, what did you get her for Christmas? I promised to shoot you for not helping her shovel snow off the driveway. Uh, what? Nothing. Uh, she got me a Hooters t-shirt. Look, can you, can you put this thing away, please? Not until I get my diet pills. Tic Tacs. Yeah, well, we'll see what the lab has to say about that. I think they're in my room. You stole my Tic Tacs? Of course not. Oh. Well, good. So what did you want? I came to tell you that I stole Mark's Tic Tacs. That figures. And why? April Fool's joke. Oh. That's not really that funny, Scott. But I'm replacing them with LSD. <laughs> Wait, you're serious? Wow, he is not going to be happy when he comes out of this. If he comes out of it. I gave him a lot. Wait, where did you get this LSD? Your mom. What? What the hell is this with my mom? She's giving drugs to people for Christmas too? No, I'm just insulting you. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, perfect. This is all I need. Yes, Mr. Masterson. Jordan. Hutch Masterson here. Jordan. Yeah, that's a new one, sir. Sure is. Listen, I'm calling because I got a beef that needs tender. Have you taken a look at the latest Nielsen ratings? Uh, actually, no, sir, since we're not involved in the Nielsen ratings. Well, I'll tell you what, Jackie. I've gone down and punched up some numbers, and it turns out we are getting our asses handed to us by our competitors. I mean, we need to spice things up. I'm talking cayenne pepper on pudding. Sir, I don't know what you're looking at, but we have no competitors. Nobody is threatened by us. And I think I've got just the thing to get us back up. Kind of add some Viagra to this uh, floppy penis of a situation we got going here. And that is why I'm happy that we have no Nielsen ratings. 
Now, you know that fat old fella, the one from the Rosebud movie with the snow globe and the dog sled and whatnot? Uh, you mean the Orson Welles movie Citizen Kane, right? Bingo. Now, before he was roasting Dean Martin and shooting fancy wine commercials, that big old Bronco staged one of the best practical jokes since TMZ tried to refer to itself as journalism. You mean his War of the Worlds broadcast? Yeah, I know. It had everyone fooled that an alien invasion was actually happening. Sure as shit he did. Had people jumping out of windows and screaming and hollering. It was absolute pandemonium. It was kind of like when my daddy used to take me to the rodeo. Well, that was before he got hauled off to prison for serving moonshine to underage college kids, but you get the gist. Uh, wow. So what you're telling us is that you want us to fake an alien invasion to boost up our imaginary ratings, right? Hell no, don't be ridiculous. Oh, oh good. I thought for a second you not even you are that crazy. Well, my doctors would have to disagree with you on that, and that's why I had him killed. But anyways, listen... The alien hoax invasion, that's old hat, son. It's been done. All right, what I want to do is something new, fresh, that's going to have people screaming out their innards. All right, I want them absolutely trampling all over one another like jackasses. Complete and total pandemonium. I'm talking no holds bar, survival of the fittest. Uh, sir, that may not be the best idea. Well, that's what they tried to tell me when I started putting mustard on my corn. And to this day, my feces have a delightful yellow tint to them. But anyways, back to this hoax. Nothing gets a crowd going more batshit insane than a good old-fashioned plague outbreak. Uh, that sounds awful. You see, you're scared already, ain't you? I'm gonna air the first killer virus brought on by the rise of the full moon. I think I'll call it the, uh, wear germ virus or something like that. The wear germ virus? Well, sir, nobody's gonna believe that. Well, maybe not now, but in the next 30 minutes, <laughs> <laughs> you like that? That's my evil laugh. Uh, I suppose pleading for you to reconsider would be a waste of my time, wouldn't it? Suppose away, son. But listen, while I get the ball rolling on this wear germ prank, I need you three to be a simple distraction, okay? Why don't you run a, uh, well, I don't know, uh, top ten movies of all time, something like that. Just keep their eyes on the screen. The top 10 greatest films? Sir, that's so basic. Plus, it's boring. And it's already been done. What is going on here? Now, just trust me like a skydiver trusts gravity. This thing will be anything but ordinary. Now, get cracking, Johnson. <sighs> Whew. Man, I feel funky. <clears throat> Anyone else see that goat run by? <laughs> April Fools! Gotcha. I'm sorry, what? You don't remember? That you're an idiot? Yeah, I know. Huh. Excellent. So, what is it tonight? Uh, well, where do I start? I just give us the short version. Okay, well, we are doing a top ten greatest films because our boss uh, wants to scare the world with a weird germ virus. Okay, maybe a slightly longer version. Top 10 greatest films, I and mean, that's been done before. I'm not really happy about that either. Yeah, well, what are we gonna do? Well, the only thing we can do... Get even. Yeah, uh, guys? That uh, Medic John thing is leaking oil? R uh, red oil. Crap. Uh, Jay, you sure that was a hologram? Uh. So the boys, they ordered that Medic John 1000 program, you know the one you see on TV? Yeah. So I had Andrew from accounting mess with him a little bit as an April Fool's kind of thing. You know how he does that trick where he can kind of look and act like a hologram? That's <laughs> great at parties, I'll tell you what. Nobody's going to get hurt by this thing, are they? What could possibly go wrong? Crap. Scott, get the mop. Already the incinerator. Mark, uh, contact the mob. We need a f another favor. Okay, fine, but my dad says this is the last time until we pay our tab. Crap! Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
evening, and welcome to another episode of The Franken Zone. I'm Jason Pritchard. And I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm... Uh, Mark Lacrina, I think. Awesome. And with the Oscars come and gone, we decided to focus on our own choice for best movies. And while the Academy has for years declared which films reign champion in the world of cinema, we decided to give you our picks for some of the greatest movies of all time. I know that goat's around here somewhere. The mosquitoes are urinating in my shower. Mark, you're on. So sit back, relax, and get ready as we... Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Phil, uh, Burmaster, uh, Doubtfire. Yeah, that works. Uh, here with the following special report. An outbreak has been confirmed by uh, science people of some sort. A super virus triggered by the rise of the full moon is already sweeping the nation. It is being dubbed the were germ virus on account of it being activated by moonlight. Though there's been no official word to panic, uh, it's very bad stuff, so you might want to start panicking. Anyway, you know, plan ahead. Uh, you might want to ignore that. Was that... God? Yes, God. Yeah. That was God. Who let that goat run camera? Yeah. Damn thing has an afro. Enjoy. Number 10, Super Mario Brothers. Let's face it, movies based on video games are always fun. And nothing beats this epic tale about two Italian plumbers and their quest to save a princess from a talking dragon. After several false alarms. Of course, the movie has really little to do with the video game. But who needs piranha plants and fire flowers when you have John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins? And instead of King Koopa and Mauser, you have Dennis Hopper and leftover sets from Blade Runner. Super Mario Brothers is a fantastic adventure filled with rocket launchers, jetpacks, no Goombas, no Hammer Brothers, and no Toad. A British actor pretending to be Italian. What more could you possibly ask for? Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. Okay, definitely not that. Nope. Number nine, Masters of the Universe. Remember the He-Man? And what a great cartoon. One of the best shows for all us kids growing up in the 80s. By the power of Grayskull. So when there was word of a movie being made based on the cartoon, of course we were all creaming in our jeans. And okay, this movie doesn't follow the cartoon all the way. Well, okay, not at all actually. But with Dolph Lundgren as the sword-wielding muscle man leading the team to battle evil in Eternia, well, okay, New York, how could this movie disappoint? Oh, sure, you don't have many of the characters from the cartoon like Orko, the sorceress, or Battle Cat, but who needs that when you have leftover elves from Willow? Or target version Ghostbuster effects, and of course, 80s pop culture instead of epic fantasy settings. Sure, it's not a faithful adaptation, but... It has time travel, very little sword fighting, and a lot of laser guns. Not to mention Courtney Cox pre-Friends, that alone makes this one of the best cartoon-based movies of all time. Number 8. The Phantom. Boy, comic book movies have come a long way. Oh no. Oh no, that goat is returned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Phil Burmaster Doubtfire again, and with developments of the dreaded were germ virus outbreak that is spreading worldwide and killing millions, which is sort of a bummer. 
We have some new information here to share with you. Some symptoms of this virus include uh, sweaty palms, uh, bad breath, and uh, elongated toes. This is no joke, people. Lock your doors, bolt your windows, and um, maybe put on a sweater or something. Yeah, a sweater. Maybe help, but probably not because this thing is uh, crazy with killing and, uh, uh, uh oh, there's my phone. That's probably my mom calling to tell me she's dying or something. Uh, bye. Now what do I do? Keep going. I have elongated toes. It's true. They're awful. Which one of you hired that goat? Just go. Sure, comic book movies have come a Stop long- Stop whispering! Sure, comic book movies have come a long way. What used to be campy television shows in the 60s has since spawned some of the biggest blockbusters of all time. But amongst some of the greatest Batman, Superman, and Avenger films is, we feel, the best comic book adapted movie of them all. The Phantom. Billy Zane stars as the ghost who walks, which is just as scary as it sounds. Here we see him decked out in an awesome purple costume, which is just as memorable and impressive as any bat suit. The Phantom can ride a horse and can also jump around a lot. His arch nemesis is not the Joker, Lex Luthor, or a giant talking gorilla, but Treat Williams. Just Treat Williams playing a villainous collector who craves the magical power of stones while sneering a lot and making plenty of malicious puns that never get old or tiresome. Will the Phantom be able to stop him? Filled with mind-boggling special effects, well-crafted action scenes, and an excellent leftover Indiana Jones story, the Phantom reigns at the top of the totem pole of superheroes. Number seven, Orgy of the Dead. Horror films are of course our favorite genre of movies around here, and for obvious reasons. But if you were to ask us which horror movie is a cut above the rest, we would answer you back with this thrilling horror classic from Ed Wood called Orgy of the Dead. Nothing to do with zombies or ghouls, Orgy has a lot of dance numbers featuring topless women. Each dance is announced by Ed Wood regular Criswell in a Dracula cape as he hangs out with Ghoulia. Because I guess Vampire had a dentist appointment. And uh, a mummy. Yeah. They sit around and watch these dances and uh, that's pretty much it. And really, that's all it needs. It's chock full of well-crafted suspense and a well-executed plot. Simple, but effective. The endless amount of dancing provides the final touch of sheer terror. Number six, Cool as Ice. Some of the most memorable movie stars are not just actors, but actors and musicians. Whether it's Michael Jackson's Thriller or Captain EO, also by Michael Jackson, Roger Daltrey and Tommy, or David Bowie in The Labyrinth, it's also thrilling to see entertainers with a multitude of talent. In the middle of the earth, in the land of Shire, there's a brave little hobbit whom we all admire. With his long wind pipe, fuzzy woolly toes, he lives in a hobbit hole and everybody knows him. Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins, he's only three feet tall. That not being one of them. Ugh. Nope. And of course, when it comes to the king, who better to hold the title than... Elvis Presley? No. Vanilla Ice. No, I think I see Elvis over there behind the camera. He's trying to eat the goat. Wow, I'm good. I guess so. The goat. Cool as Ice is the debut of rap star Vanilla Ice, an ice cream flavor of the month who dominated the music scene in the 90s for about 10 minutes. But thankfully, we were left with this amazing film where our hero, the Iceman himself, finding love with a high society debutante through the power of dance and rap. The story is filled with passion and romance, as well as an extremely well-written storyline that's truly original in content and not at all contrived or cliched. With exciting dance numbers that puts Michael Jackson to shame and an acting performance that rivals that of Robert De Niro, 
Vanilla Ice wins not only the hearts of his dream girl and her stuffy upscale family, but also ours as well. Drop that zero and get with the hero. Number five, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. What can you say about Superman? He's faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, and the only man other than John Oates who can pull off a jerry curl. Yes, for years, Superman movies have always been a part of every generation, and at the top of them is the one Man of Steel movie that captures the heart and truth of this legendary comic book character. Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Oh sure, 1 and 2 were good, and newer movies like Man of Steel have since evolved the character, but Superman 4 remains at the top of the list. It soars above the rest with top-notch special flying effects and a terrific story that doesn't bother with new villains like Bizarro or Brainiac, but rather brings back Lex Luthor again for more Gene Hackman hijinks. Also, the charisma between Clark and Lois is just as powerful and energetic as the original. The movie is also complete with a top-notch battle between Supes and Nuclear Man, perhaps the greatest supervillain ever created. With all these things going for it, Superman 4 is just as fantastic and extraordinary as the cape-wearing Kryptonian himself, which is why Superman 4 The Quest for Peace reaches a whole new level of excellence that its predecessors never dreamed. Number 4, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. When it comes to an adventure, nothing beats an Indiana Jones movie. Damn it all! He's... Uh oh. Hello all. <clears throat> Hello all, this is Phil Burmaster, Doubtfire again. And folks, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it looks like that mean old wear germ virus is just a real stubborn jerk. Millions have died, millions more seriously sick, and I don't mean just here, folks. I mean everywhere. Australia, Africa, and uh, all those other places in Europe, where it is, it's even on other planets. Now, Mars, uh, that anus planet, uh, Melmac, whatever. Bottom line is there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's unstoppable. My God, we're all doomed. Excuse me. Uh, Jay, huh. he sounds like really afraid. I don't know why. This is his prank, and you know, you don't, wait. You don't think he'd be that stupid to be falling for his own joke, do you? I know I would. Oh, this is true. Yeah. I want to eat one of my ears, but then I'll only be able to hear half the music. As I was saying, nothing beats a good old Indiana Jones movie. And what better to treat yourself than with the best of the bunch? I'm talking, of course, about Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Unlike the other Indiana Jones movies, this installment is more reality-based. Its plot is far more feasible and not so far-fetched. The action is very well-rounded, and the performances are never once obnoxious or tiresome. And of course, the addition of Shia LaBeouf adds to the level of enjoyment of this all-star cast. Particularly in the movie's greatest scene in which Shia LaBeouf is swinging through the jungle with monkeys, a sight worthy of anything in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, the other films may have been better received by critics and audiences across the globe, but we here think that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull has finally captured what truly makes an Indiana Jones story such a memorable tale. Number three, The Room. Of course, not everything we like is horror. At the Franken Zone, we have a respect for all genres, even stuff with Andy Dick in it, but very little. Very, very little dick. Very little dick. Very tiny little dick. You guys need to grow up. Take, for example, the always popular drama film. These hard-hitting stories often bring tears, laughter, and romance with their edgy storylines and powerful performances. 
And what better film to capture the quintessential drama epic than Tommy Wiseau's The Room? The Room features writer, director, and star Tommy Wiseau, who is easily this generation's Orson Welles. It's a captivating tour de force of love, passion, and desire. Never has the hardships of betrayal, self-doubt, and breast cancer been so well captured. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Look, don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. With an amazing cast, a credible lead performance, and a clever mix of comedy, heartache, and romance, The Room spins a web of fascinating storytelling. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! Never has a film left such an impact on its viewers. Rousseau's cinematic brilliance gives us the greatest morality tale of one man's struggle to survive the harsh learnings of life. A true masterpiece. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Number two, Batman and Robin. Much like Superman, Batman has appeared in countless movies. The 60s gave us a campy, psychedelic man of the people, or bat of the people, who carried shark repellent. The 80s gave us Tim Burton, who gave us a dark and brooding Batman who couldn't turn his head in his costume. The 2000s gave us Chris Nolan, who gave us a Batman who couldn't speak properly. <laughs> Where were the other drugs going? You know what? That's not bad. I just lost my voice. Yeah, that sounds good. Can I just say that? Yeah, no, I swear to God. And of course, the 90s gave us Joel Schumacher. And quite frankly, Joel Schumacher gave us the best interpretation of Batman. And no film proves this better than Batman and Robin. Complete with spectacular neon, gripping performances, top-notch casting, and a lot of subtle action scenes, Schumacher captures the true heart of the caped crusader with its anatomically correct costumes and accurate storytelling, which stays true to the mythology. The Arnold Schwarzenegger one-liners only add to the well-crafted power of dialogue, and Clooney's Batman is a dry and milky performance, and by far the best of all of them. With ice skating, choreographed fights, giant Mexican wrestlers, and a Batman credit card, Batman and Robin stands as the finest example as why the public has embraced this iconic comic book character for generations. And now, it's time for our number one pick, perhaps the greatest film ever made. This story is so influential, so captivating. Really? <clears throat> Folks, this is Phil Burmaster Doubtmaster Doubtfire here. Having been distracted by all this millions of dying folk and all, I forgot to plug our new sponsor for these reports. Jerry Orbach Brand Flakes. High on fiber and eyebrows. Of course, with no one being round to eat it, Sort of seems pointless mentioning it, but I guess even in the apocalypse, money never sleeps. Anyhow, remember Jerry Orbach Brand Flakes? Nobody puts breakfast in the corner. Okay, uh, that's it. I guess it's uh, time to die. Wow, this is getting annoying. I know. Let's just wrap this up. Mark, how are you holding up? I can see behind my eyeballs and feel things floating in my cheek cells and my skull is trying to poke through my head and that goat is still mocking my conspiracy beliefs in the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot harboring a love child. He's fine. I call him Loch Footness. Number one, Battlefield Earth. Yes, this is our number one pick for greatest film of all time. Battlefield Earth is a sci-fi extravaganza that will open your eyes to the truth about life as well as wow your mind with its inspiring mythology. Based on the popular beliefs of Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard, Battlefield Earth delivers intergalactic war at its finest. With beautiful cinematography, striking blue filter scenes, and punched up dialogue, Battlefield Earth is a non-stop thrill ride. 
a fantasy that outwars Star Wars with an ideology that outthinks Star Trek. And of course, we have an all-star cast of acting greats giving some of the best performances of their careers while the camera is tilted throughout 90% of this whole film. In particular, we have John Travolta, whose Oscar-worthy villainous role sets the dark and menacing tone of the danger that lurks in the form of these large four-headed alien beings. Who are you? I'm called Exeter. I'm a scientist like yourself. N no, not those guys. Yes, Battlefield Earth may have had its share of negative press, but as far as we're concerned, Battlefield Earth deserves that Oscar just as much as any Titanic or Irreverent or Forrest Gump. The movie is a deep study into our perception of life and death, which does not fail to bore us or make us laugh out loud with mocking comments in the slightest. Nobody works for free. Man, animals do. And that will just about wrap up this episode of The Franken Zone. Hopefully you'll get right on to seeing some of these carefully selected masterpieces of cinema. Mark. Ah! Where am I? And he's back. Oh, Welcome back. You feeling better? Yeah, I think so. All right, so we're ready to begin? I'll take us in. Good evening, do, everyone. Do, 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 Welcome do. in. We're done. All done. All done. Middle of time. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I feel so weird. Like tainted Tic Tacs or something. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I want to know. Oh, here we go. And here it is, right on time. Yes, Mr. Masterson. Now what in the name of all things Southern are you three trying to do to me? I'm sorry, who is this? You know goddamn well who it is, Joshua. And what in the hell have you three been smoking anyways? I'm getting calls up the poop chute saying you three have gone bad shit insane. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it turns out your top 10 list was so damn stupid, people are calling me demanding you guys be shipped off to Juniper Hill. Well, you wanted ratings, even if they are imaginary. Now, I don't know what kind of shenanigans you're trying to pull, Jesse, but you best somehow fix this. I mean, your countdown was so damn awful, I don't think anyone's been paying attention to me at all. And I got enough on my plate being quarantined and all. Wait, what? You're in quarantine? He's what? About time. Told you stupidity was contagious. Says the man who believes in lock footness. What? Nothing. Nothing. Now I've confined myself to an airtight fallout shelter I got off a of Craigslist. Ordered it back when I was suffering from a fear of fleas. I figure it's my best bit of avoiding this whole wear germ virus while it's killing half the nation. Uh, sir, the wear germ virus was a hoax, remember? I mean, this was your hoax. Now, if I were you, Joseph, I would gather some of your buddies and hightail it to some secure location where you can hunker down for a while. At least till this whole wear germ virus just blows over. I mean, this thing has got people bleeding through the nipples. Sir, there is no such thing. You made this virus up. Well, I'll be. I'm starting to feel warm. Hope it's not too late yet. Are my nipples bleeding yet? Nope, just really small. April Fools! Seriously, if you bought into any of what we said, then you're an idiot. Subtle. 